break into a machine in North Korea. Break into a machine in Russia. Breaking into a machine in North Korea. Break into a machine in China. Breaking into Russia. Breaking into North Korea. It's an attack that requires a couple of guys being bored. Hey everyone, Nick here. And how safe is the technological infrastructure of your country? The short answer is that it's entirely possible for someone to take down the digital footprint of an entire nation, and all it takes is for them to be a little unoccupied. Now that shouldn't scare you a lot, because we are doing our best to prevent, or at the very least, mitigate a lot of these risks. But just for fun, why don't we go a little deeper and see what can happen. So back in December of 2015, a bunch of Ukrainian hackers had infiltrated an electrical grid to cut off power to over 230,000 people in a brutal winter. And the way in which they did it wasn't even that advanced. They used a middle school trick of corrupting a Microsoft Word file, but this time it didn't get them out of turning in an assignment or a paper. It did, however, give them access to the grid's mainframe so that they could wreak havoc on the lives of almost a quarter of a million individuals. And a lot of this leads to a a pretty interesting dilemma. Many of the current infrastructural systems run on intentionally older machines so that they're much harder to corrupt with current malware. A prime example being the US's nuclear defense system, which still runs on 1980s IBM computers. I actually made a video about this, so check it out down below or in the suggested box. But anyway, why do this? Well, as I said, for one, it makes these computers a lot harder to infect. For example, there's no USB port where you could load a firmware Trojan or no network access for someone out there in the world to hit you with a boot virus. A lot of this makes stuff like this impossible when you're dealing with these old computers. But here's the catch. If you do manage to infect them, it's almost impossible to get rid of the virus itself. You're either going to have to trash the machine or do a manual reboot. And when you're talking about machines that run, say, power to a whole city or water lines to millions of people, it's a lot harder said than done. The good news, however, is that a lot of these risks can be slightly mitigated by using multi-step authentication processes. That's why in a lot of the services you might use today, like Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, and so on, they have you verify your identity with a text message, or they might call you on your cell phone. All of this is to add a human element of security such that there's an actual person there to verify whatever the machine is doing. Now, that being said, it's a lot harder to do stuff like this when we're talking about infrastructural systems, but it's entirely entirely possible. But nonetheless, a lot of this talk is part of a larger conversation regarding cyber war and smart cities. It seems that the more we advance our society technologically, the more vulnerable we become to an entirely different type of warfare, which I guess in a sense is natural. But that shouldn't scare you. I know it's frightening or intimidating, but the truth is that we need to understand where these threats are coming from and understand that they are being taken seriously. And I hope that's enough for now. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.